good morning. Woken up to this. Hopefully, you can see it behind me. That's our camp set up. I thought I'd talk to the camera this morning instead of yesterday being behind the camera. And hopefully, I'm not panning this too fast, guys. But this is basically our camp at Maxwell's Flat. As you can see in the background, there's some other people camped here, as we said yesterday. So we're going to get on to doing some breakfast and stuff and then think about packing up. So that's probably not a lot to show you around that. But that's this morning. It's, I don't know if it's clear or whether that's fog up there. Not sure. Looks a little overcast, but I reckon it's fog. So we'll see how the day goes. We'll take you with us, of course. And here, of course. Is. <laughs> See, she's alive. Get ready for the cuppers. rugged north all the way down to the beautiful south the center the east the west doesn't matter where from travel to tips and all sorts of other things for all driving you've come to the right place come for a ride with us at mud ducks forward right to Ford Rangers, good cars, but a lot like Mazda BT50s, you open and close the doors a lot, parking lights keep coming on. What happened? Shut the doors and locked on this car last night, battery's flat this morning. So, and of course they're pricks of things to connect up to. The worst part is I've got a really good set of jumper leads coming, but they're coming, they're not here yet. So we have to jump it off at 200. It's not the end of the world this, but Bear in mind, if you've got a Range or a BT50, this can happen really easy. <sighs> Normally I'd let this charge for a while, I'll give it a go, see what happens, if not we'll just have to let it charge for a while.
What do I do? Ranges. It's a problem. It's two problems. These battery terminals are a bugger thing to clip a set of leads onto. It took me half a dozen goes to find the right spot to actually get that to clip on. Now it's taken that many times, but now I'm actually getting, this voltmeter here reads me start battery. Now I'm actually getting a decent voltage in there. But it's ran that flat, that Kaz is sitting there revving up the cruiser for a couple of minutes. We have to let it charge because it won't start yet. Just have to let it sit there and put some charge into that battery. Anyway, it'll go eventually. So what do you believe it's going on? Well, I think my DC-DC charger is taking power from a start battery for too long. So I'm disconnecting the blue ignition trigger wire uh, from the main straight 12 volt DC source. And for the time being, I'm going to switch it one way or another. I'll find an ignition source for it later. On other cars, it hasn't been a problem. They shut off the batteries quick enough, but obviously these ranges are a bit DC sensitive and it's flattened the battery too much by being connected that way. So I'm going to bypass the, well, I'm not going to bypass, I'm going to set up the ignition control circuit manually. So when I start the car, I can turn it on. When I switch the car off, I can switch it off and it's not charging at all the minute I switch it off. So that's what I'm in the process of doing now. So you can just make some little jump leads up and be pretty wiring system is not going to look as neat, but we'll get there. And he's getting a charge from the cruiser now. He's getting a charge of 13.5. That's the start battery. So, just a little bit of time, we'll get there. fun we've just left Maxwell's flat campground probably an hour hour and a half later than we would have done that's because this thing decided to have a flat battery now you probably will have seen some footage on this by now but I'll explain it why I think it's going flat I put out the DC DC charger into it recently so um, it's running the dual battery and it's charging beautifully but often over the past I've wired the ignition source wire straight into the start battery main wire and most batteries and most cars handle it but apparently from here it seems to keep charging well after you switch the car off to the point where it seems to be pulling the start battery down where it won't fire up. So I've jerry-rigged a way of switching the ignition source to that DC-DC on and off. It's a little bit rudimentary and crude, but it'll do. I'll have a start power source on my fuse box. So I've run the power lead from the fuse down to the blue wire, the ignition trigger wire on the DC-DC. And once I've started the car, I plug the fuse in. When I switch the car off, I'll unplug the fuse and that will turn the charger off. It will not take any power from the start battery. As a secondary precaution, we've turned off the interior lights. So when the doors open and shut on this, they're not on. Uh, unfortunately, Rangers BT50s, when you open and close the doors, the parking lights come on which is fantastic to light up where you're going until you hit the, the key to lock the car. 
and then they switch off. Your problem is if you're not locking the car, they're on for quite a while. And that obviously adds to the draw on the start battery. So it's a half reasonable idea, in theory. In practice, not so good, Ford. Anyhow, never mind. Um, I'm going to hopefully minimise all of that situation. Look, I'm going to pretty well just get out of the car and leave the doors open unless it's really dusty. And uh, then hopefully that will mean once the lights go out, they stay out and I can just get in and out of it. Every time you touch a door or a switch, the lighting comes on. Anyway, it's a little bit of a jerry-rigged thing. It's a nuisance. When I get home, I'll find a proper ignition source and feed that wire into that, and that should hopefully solve the problem. Anyway, I'll certainly know whether that contributes to the problem or not for the rest of this trip. Another problem is, it's got a factory forward battery of its sunken uh, posts. When you go to start it, it's very hard to clip jumper leads onto took me quite a while of fiddling to get the leads to go into a spot where they'd actually stay clipped on and put voltage into the uh, battery from the uh, 200. Now, unfortunately I don't have the anti-zap leads that I'd like to have which is a bit of a nuisance so uh, I've got some on order they'll be here by the time I get back on the holiday but anyway it's a bit useless to me now. Anyhow we'll make do we'll keep traveling and we'll show you what we can and I want to show you how these trips run whether they go properly smoothly or not if they don't you guys see it if they do you guys see it I know it's a bit of a long rant guys but we'll get back into the rest of the trip video for you so hopefully you don't find this too boring if you did you probably skipped over it by now anyway see you down the track Yeah, it kind of looks that way. Well, it looks it on the map here too, so... Yep. been a while since I've been in here this Jeep track doesn't seem to be as bad as it used to be because there's been fires and dazers and things through here obviously for uh, because of the fires so that's pretty good at the moment uh, um, yeah. the sign at the beginning says don't have a go at in wet weather and I can understand why but you know, it's pretty dry at the moment so um, yeah it look, it's looking pretty good don't know if we're going to make very many kilometres today after a late start and everything, but anyway, that's four wheel driving, isn't it? Jeep track for a while, and as you can see, the roads are in remarkable condition. Forestry or national parks, I think it's forestry, have done a fantastic job of cleaning it all up again. Certainly, way better than it was since last time I was here, no doubt about it. Anyway, uh, I'm pretty sure you could drive these tracks in just about anything, and uh, we're managing it without any hassle whatsoever. So, uh, anyhow, we'll get back into it. And we'll see you in a little while.
We're on this Eagle Hawk track, I think it's called. Now we're not going to be on here for very long. We've come down here for a reason. So we're sort of parked a bit funny. We'll be going back up the Sells River Jeep track in a second. But I'll show you what's down here. Now behind my gorgeous wife is a little water crossing on this track. Now last time we were here, that was pretty well undrivable. So that's been cleaned up a lot. But that's not what we're here to show you. What we're here to show you is this old stamper. Now you would probably recall it from my last Cells River video. If you've looked at it, if you haven't looked at it, go and have a look at it if you like. But geez, they've done some work in here. I guess they're worried about it in the fires. Because you walk straight up to it now, and before it used to be a pain, you have to go around heaps of stuff. Now, I think pretty sure it's a five head stamper. You can see five things, so let's go with that. So this is some of our history. That's a big thing. Uh, just imagining what that was like to try and get down here initially. But it's leaning now, it never used to be. So obviously weather and erosion is taking its toll on it, but it's been here a long time. Up above it, it's a much newer looking water tank than what I reckon the stamp would have been. And I'm assuming they pump water up there from the river somehow to somehow turn a pump on a belt that would make this thing work. I don't honestly know. I'm not into these things much. I've certainly got no knowledge on it. But that's the old five head stamper. It's off the Sells River Jeep track. And you can hear the cars running. We leave them running, well particularly mine today, because of its battery issue. But generally they're charging and working pretty hard all day, so you let the alternators do their job, charge everything up. So that's the little stamper. And we're gonna head back up that hill behind where the cruiser is parked and follow the Jeep Derek down further. Not sure how much is in there for you to look at, but anyway, we'll do it. That's what we're here for, it's all part of the adventure. Isn't this just a pretty bit of river though? Really, really nice. It's actually two streams coming to one here. So where that track is, that's coming down, downhill from there to this pond and up there, it's also coming downhill. So they join here and they go that way. Now I'm pretty sure, and I'll stand corrected, I'm not scared, that this is the Sells River. Not sure that's two tributaries into it. Well, this is where it starts or whether one of these is the cells and it's a creek running into it i don't know it's a nice little area it's quite cool it's a cool day today overcast so it's uh, not unpleasant coming back up from that little stamper now. It's a bit steep the first bit. It's not difficult. I'm in second low. It's climbing up pretty easily. And literally once you get over that bump, it's straight forward. And that stamper is, geez, it wouldn't be a kilometre from the turn off. So if you're coming down the Sells Jeep track, you want to go and have a look at it, you turn off onto that 
think it's Eagle Hawk or Eagle Ridge or something. Anyway, something like that. And that takes you down there. So, it's all pretty straightforward, guys. Uh, any decent four wheel drive will do it without any problem at all, particularly in the dry weather. So, we're coming back to the corner now on the Jeep track, so that probably not even a kilometre. And there is a sign there. Corn Cub Road to Clay Road, two kilometres to Notting Bull Road. There you go. Oh, this way goes to Eagle Trail. Forget everything I just said. Clay Cobb Road. All right. crossing it's great Definitely am. It's great. This I can handle. Anything harder, I think I might freak out of it. Well, oh, geez, I think we're pretty close. Yeah, it's just through that crossing and you're there. hasn't been a very long day it's been a fairly short day actually the range hasn't been switched off all day but given the events of this morning we've parked it so that the cruiser can get to it easily if it needs a jump we've thrown solar on the start battery and I've disconnected the DC DC charger from it so we're going to camp here tonight now I don't believe this is a recognized campground but people camp here obviously I've camped here before but it's not an official campground so I won't be doing a spotlight on campgrounds video on it but this is 
the Sells River Hut or the Sells River Hilton. It's been called all of these things. It's like a lot of these kind of huts. Yeah, it's the Hilton right there. Uh, like a lot of these huts, it's just really got lots of graffiti in it. So you've been here. Now, unfortunately, grubs have less socks in it and stuff. But, oh, that's what happens. We'll get rid of those. So it's just a, basically a little old tin shed full of graffiti, which adds to the character. Uh, granted, I think it adds to the character of it. Somebody's left a really good fry pan there. Quite good, really. That can stay there, of course. And lots and lots of writing, different people, different dates, different times. It's way too much for me to tell you about. There's even a set of fairy lights up here. I'm not sure they were here last time I was here. I don't know where they even hook up, or if they hook up, or if they're solar. I don't know. Anyway, they're there. <laughs> so they tell me that downstream from here, if you go for a walk, and we'll have a look later, there's a waterfall. So we might go and have a look at that. We're going to camp here tonight anyway, given the late start I had. And uh, we're about to have some lunch. So that is what we're going to do for today's portion of the trip. Now I know this is fairly short, today's bits, but don't get what you get now tomorrow the plan assuming the rain just starts early without any trouble is head up there We've driven that before and we're going to drive it again so that is our plan for tomorrow but for today early camp have some lunch we're going to look at see if we can find that waterfall i'll take you with us for that Otherwise, we'll catch up with you later. Oh, and in case you didn't sort of get it, there are no facilities here at all. Self-sufficient, guys. Bring it in, take it out. I'll be walking around a little bit later, picking up the crap I can see already. Respect the bush, guys. Well, inconveniently, it started to rain. I tell you, don't come in here on these tracks when it's raining. So, with any luck, it's only some passing showers and the weather will be fine again tomorrow, even later today, which we won't have too much trouble getting out. But anyway, that'll remain to be seen. Fortunately, we're at the hut. Now we're going to set the swag up inside it and camp inside the hut tonight. So we'll be dry and there's a fireplace in the hut so we'll be warm. Yeah, we will be. So that should all be good. Mind you with that said it's already easing up so we'll see what happens with that. Anyway, that's the joys of it. Well, the rain stopped for a while, so we're going for a bit of a look around. Yeah, you know, by pure accident earlier, I was walking around and I came across this. So I thought I'd better go back and get the camera. Yeah, I've got no idea whether this is an old shaft. Looks like it might be. But definitely something. Now, I'm not going to make any effort to go in there, but that's probably an old mine shaft. That would have had to be just about cut out of that rock. I doubt it's naturally occurring. Well, I didn't know that was there, but it does kind of explain why there's a hut not far away. So that's pretty cool. So we'll walk around this area and have a look at down near the water. They tell me there might be a waterfall down there, so we'll go and see what we can see down that way. Well, after a bit of effort, because you can't cross the river the way you used to be able to cross it on foot, 
I did find a way across. So I found the track. Kaz has bailed on me because sure footed in boots on water crossings and rocks, she'll fall in. So she's bailed. I found what I believe is the old track to get down here. So we'll go for a walk as far as we can. I think I can see my destination in the distance. But, uh, yeah. Just the initial water crossing after the hut is a bit interesting. Especially if you've got footwear on and jeans. If you're coming down here and it's a hot day and you're wearing shorts, swimmers, thongs and stuff and you tolerate your feet getting muddy and horrible when you get out the other side and you've got a way of washing them off then I don't think it's a problem but otherwise there's a problem so come downstream a bit more as you can see Now, I may not be able to cross this. I'm sure with the right footwear on you can. But really not in that position. This is slippery as. And I don't want to go over. But down there, there's a really nice waterfall. I've seen it before. So this is definitely the way to get there. But not today, guys. So sorry about that. If you're in the area, and you've got your exploration feet on give it a go should be really nice but not in the situation I'm in at the moment you know, I'll find my way back there's really not a lot that I can show you here between here and going back so I'll see you in a while Well, we decided to light the fire in the shack because might as well outside's still rainy and overcast we've got a hut to ourselves so swags behind us on the floor so we decided this is home for the night I don't honestly think I'll show you anything about cooking or any of that stuff. So we're mostly just going to sit around the fire inside a hut all night. Worst way to spend night, eh? Alright, we will probably see you in the morning. If we don't burn down or something silly. Might not hear me as well as you will in a minute. But here we are, in the hut, in the dark, having tea. Swag in there. Gorgeous wife there. Hi. <laughs> Dinner there. Fire there. I'm that warm that I have no jumpers or anything on. So this is the inside of a hut at night. And of course we've got a little tiny solar puff light up there. Isn't that pretty? And probably the light from this camera won't make it look as good as it is if I didn't have the light on, but it's a GoPro. Low light GoPros, waste of time. So I've got to have a light on so you can see what's going on. All right, guys, this will definitely be it for tonight. Have a good one. We'll catch you later. Well, as you can see, we made it to the hut. The day didn't go as planned, but we still had a good time. Did a bit of low range for driving, saw some history, and uh, then had a great night camped at the hut. That will do us for today. Hope you're enjoying these couple of stills in the background. Hope you liked the video. If you did, chuck a like on it. 
If you're new here, consider subscribing, and if you do subscribe, click the bell to get notifications when I put a new video up. And as always, to the old hands, thanks again for taking the time out of your day to watch one of my clips. We will see you on the next one, which incidentally is the final part of this series. It didn't go to plan, but uh, you'll see that next week. Have a good one, guys. All the best, and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers from Steve and Kaz at Mud Ducks 4 Drive Touring.